All right, so this is the 10th video in my Roblox Monopoly tutorial, and I'm going to work on the buildable lots. I'm going to put all the little decals on them and stuff, and uh, the text, but I'm not going to do it by hand. I'm going to do it by code. I thought that would be pretty cool. And now that we're here, and we're looking at these decals, I wanted to give a shout out to Michael Gibson, who uploaded a lot of these decals. I think he did the chance and the community chest, maybe even the centerpiece. But um, he built a Roblox Monopoly game. I'll put the link in the description. He also has a YouTube channel. You should check it out. It's pretty cool. So let's get started now. This, like I said, this is the 10th video. So if you haven't been following along or the ninth video didn't work out for you, you can go ahead, click on this link. I'll have it as starter game in the description. Hit these three dots, hit edit, and then you'll have this world right here. So if you messed up the ninth video and you can't do it anymore, you can just go ahead and start from, from that point and then you'll be good to go. All right, so now, like I said, buildable lots. Let's open up our game, our game board here. We have these tiles. Tiles are everything. Some of these are railroads. Some of these are community chests and chants, things like that. And we already have this thing called prop type on chants and community chests. Prop type is a general classifier for the tile. I'm going to keep using that methodology, even though I'm using code for decorating the tiles. I'm going to do a control D on this chance one. I'm going to drag it to Atlantic, right? And instead of the value being chance, I'm going to call it lot, right? I'm going to do that for all of my buildable lots, all of my colored tiles. I did a control D to duplicate it. I put one on Baltic, do a control D, put one on boardwalk. Now go down, I'm going to pause the video, go down and add it to all your buildable lots like Connecticut and uh, Illinois and things like that. And then I will come back in a second. All right, so now I have these all populated out, just the color tiles. So I have an Atlantic, Baltic, things like that. If you miss one, that's fine. It'll just be blank, and then you'll be like, oh, I forgot a property type, and you'll be able to add it. So if you add one to like electric company or something like that, you're going to get funny results. You're going to get an error, but you'll be able to look through here. Just make sure your property types for all your things like Illinois says lot, and then you'll be able to, you'll be able to fix it. It won't be too bad. So now let's go to our, let's see, we got our board, our board utils. That's where all of our stuff is going to be today. I'm going to open up board utils. I'm going to go ahead and close that window so you have a little more space. We're going to go down here, scroll on down, and you see this init board. This gets called when we prepare our players, and that's good because we need to shuffle our deck between each game. So this gets called between each game. We don't want to rebuild the board between each game. We only want to build the board on starter setup, on, on a server startup. So let's make another function, a local function called create board. And I'm going to add this array to my create board. So I'm just going to copy this down to 40. I'll hit control X. I mean, highlight that. If I say copy, I meant highlight. Control V and paste it, All right? So this is going to be my create board. I still need init board because I'm going to do stuff in between my games like uh, put pieces on go, right? Like put pieces on go. These are just notes. You don't have to type these in. I'm going to remember this for later for other videos. And then I want to do stuff like uh, I have my deck shuffled. I want to remove houses and hotels. Houses. Oh my gosh. There we go. Houses and hotels and other stuff, right? Like um, remove owners from properties. We're going to do that. Remove owners from properties. And we'll probably add some more stuff there too. But here with this create board we only want to call this we only want to call this once we'll do a control c and i am going to call it right below where we call the function we only call this module script once so this will only get called once if we start calling the module script from other places we're going to need to move this so that it will only get called one time but for now it's good for now it's perfect now like i said i want to build all these with code 
how do I do that? I need more information in my board map. And I'm only going to do it for lots right now. So we're going to need a title that we're going to show on our decal. And I'm going to do Mediterranean, that's hard to spell, Avenue. And that's going to be on a text label, but I want it to be on separate lines. I want Mediterranean Avenue to be on separate lines. So we're going to do something called a slash n new line character, right? This slash n here will give you a new line in between your words so that it's going to do a line break. You should know that because it's in other programming languages too, like Java and C Sharp and I think, yes, yeah, C, C++, things like that. All right, we need a price. So the price will be 60. I'm looking at my Avenue, my Mediterranean Avenue card. We're going to have an owner, right? Right now it's nil. Nobody's going to own it at the start of the game. We are going to have rent. So it's $2 for Mediterranean. One house, I did H1 for one house. That's $10 if it has one house, that's what you pay. Two houses, it's $30 if there's two houses on the lot. Three houses is 90, four houses, 160, and then a hotel is essentially five houses. We'll do H5 for a hotel, that's 250. And now I'm going to do number of houses, and we're gonna start out with zero. And then I'm going to do a house cost. So how much does it cost to put a house on there? That's 50 for Mediterranean. And there's a mortgage value. So if you need to flip a property over or sell a house, that's what you get for it. So now what I'm going to do is it's going to be painful to watch me do all of that. So I prepared um, a board map for you. Put it in the description. We're going to cut and we're going to paste it right in here. So let me just copy this. I'm going to copy the whole board map, not just the one for lots. That would be too painful to do. Let me just hit a control V. So that's in the description, right? So there's a lot of stuff in here, a lot of code. It would take you a really long time. It took me a really long time, but this way you can cut and paste it. You don't have to watch me painfully doing the whole thing, but you can see I did the same thing for only buildable lots. So com one is a community chest. I didn't do anything for income tax or Reading Railroad yet. We're going to get to those. But now that we have all this data, we can set up our lots with code and use that data for lots of things. On the bottom here, right, after we did our board map for the 40th, the 40th tile, I want to do this thing called set up lots. It's a, it's a function but I did not define it yet. So let's go ahead and copy this. Control C. I'm gonna go right above create board. I'm gonna paste it. I wanna put local function setup lot, lots. Local function setup lots. I'm gonna do a for loop. So I'll do for I, I wanna go through all of the things in the board map. Oops, I equals one, the number of tiles in the board map. This is a square, uh, this is a, a comma, and then in steps of one, do. So it's going to go through everything. It's going to go through go and community chats and income tax. We only really want to do things with a lot. So I'm going to say if board map uh, square bracket i dot prop, that's the tile, and then on the tile, we have a prop type. Let's go ahead and do, let's do a find first child. That's a prop type. Because remember, we don't have that prop type on all of our stuff. Just our lots and our community chests and stuff like that. And then we'll say and board map, whoops, square bracket I, um, prop and then prop type val dot value equals equals lot then all right that's a pretty big line let me go ahead and move let me move it down here at the end there we go two lines 
for our if statement. So this has to be correct. We have to have a prop type on there. If we don't, we're not going to execute the if loop and it has to be lot. Then we'll go ahead and do a print statement just to check, just to see if it works. Print, let's say lot equals comma board map, open bracket, I close bracket, prop, and then name. It's going to print out this name here, like med, Baltic, stuff like that. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's see if we got a printout. So I'll need to go to view, output. Ah, there we go. It printed it out as soon as we started, right? So it said med, Baltic, Oriental. If you got some errors in here, then just check. Just check your tiles in your board game under tiles or your game board under tiles. And that's where the error will be. But we got no errors here. That's good. Let's go ahead and continue. Let's go put more stuff in our setup lots. Let's do something interesting that we can see. So we'll do a local, I'm gonna do S GUI, and I wanna do an instance new, I'm gonna do a surface GUI, not screen GUI, right? You'll get an error. You have to do surface GUI. Here it is, down here, hiding. And we need to make a parent. We'll make, we'll make this the parent, the board map ith element prop. That's going to be the parent because we're putting that on each tile. And then S GUI, whoops, S GUI needs to be pointing up. So we're going to say the face of the surface GUI is going to be the enum dot normal ID, right? The normal is the vector pointing out of a certain direction on an object. We're going to say top. Then let's put a frame on the, on the surface GUI, FRM instance new frame and that parent is going to be the sgui right so we're putting the sgui on the tile we're putting the frame on the sgui and we're going to mess with the position a little bit let's say position will equal we need this udim2 if we're doing this with code first value is x scale which is going to be zero so we want it on the on the left of the starting on the left of the screen gui or on the left of the yeah, left of the screen GUI. And then we're going to push it down 20% on the screen GUI. So the frame is going to be allowing the color bar at the top. I thought that would look pretty good. Then we'll do size. This is the size of the frame. So that's also a UDIM2 new. X is going to be the full width. So that's one zero pixel offset. 80% on the Y because we have that little bar on the top. All right, then we'll do frame, background color three. I played with a few colors. I'm not really good at colors. So I got it close to what I thought the Monopoly board should look like. 195, 240, 210. Let's see what we got. Let's take a look. All right, so now we should have some stuff on the tiles. No words yet or prices or anything, but we should be able to see it. I'm going to run over, but the intermission is going to end before I get there. Oh, look at that. We can kind of see some stuff there. Here we go. Nice. Ah, and then we, we teleported. So this is a color. Um, it's a little bit lighter than this color and this color is a little bit different anyway, but it's a little bit lighter, but that's cool. If you change the color, now you only have to change it one place and it's going to, it's going to update it to all those tiles. So cool. Let's put the name of the place on our on our tile and that's going to be easier than you think so all we got to do is we have to add a text label all right so we're here and we'll say local we'll call it lot lot name label and that's going to be an instance new text label and the parent will be the frame then we'll Go ahead and let's change the lot name labels background transparency. There we go. We're gonna make it invisible because we've got the color what we want. And we'll need the size, lot label, lot name label, size, udim2 new, one, because we wanted to stretch across the X, so that's 100% of the X zero pixel offset, 30% on the Y, and zero pixel offset. 
cool. So the positioning, we don't have to mess with because we're going to put it right underneath the bar, but you could do the positioning if you want to move that around a little bit. So I'll say a lot name label text. Let's go ahead and put our board map, the ith element we're on, and then look at this. Here's our title. So in our board map, we'll go like this. Title. And now that should print out. So that'll be pretty good. Let's go ahead and Ooh, I forgot to stop it. That's all right. We'll stop it and play it again. Let's see if we have some titles on there. And I'm going to run over. I really should shorten that intermission while I'm testing, but I'm not going to. Ooh, look how tiny that is. So they're on there. They're just really, really tiny. So we've got to make a, we've got to make a quick switch. Go down here. And then maybe for text size, Let's do a text name label and we'll do text scale. Text scaled. And we'll say true. All right, now let's go ahead and play it again. And we'll run over. We won't wait for the teleport. I have a good feeling about this. Ah, cool. Looking good. We could change the font too. We might want to actually make this like um, like bold or something, but I think this is good for now. Might even want to move it down, but let's put the price on there for now. Let's go back to our board utils. Now price is going to be very similar. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat a little bit. And this leads you to messing up, I know, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, so instead of lot name label, I'm going to put like lot price label. So price label and copy that control V control V control V control V cool now this this is our size do we want the size to be the same I think we do uh, we do want the position we want to move that down so let's go ahead and move the position down a little bit we'll say lot price label position equals udim2 dot new and we'll do one uh, no zero right zero in the X we're not gonna change the X zero for the pixel offset on the X 70% down on the Y let's take take a look at that and see if that's pretty good now we don't want the title down here we want something with the price right so we have a price right we do have a price right did I put a price in here yeah price 60 all right, and then let's put some text in front of it too. So we'll say price, dollar sign, and then this is gonna be a string concatenator, dot, dot, and that should look pretty good. I don't think I'll do text scale. I think I'll actually do a uh, text size on this, make it an absolute size. So text size, we'll say 40, just so you can see some different stuff. Do I got everything? Let's try it. Yeah, background transparency. We want everything else to be the same. Yeah, I'll start running over before we teleport. Oh, we're not going to make it. Oh, there it is. There's a price. And they're right, too, right? So uh, I got 100, 100, 120. Now, if you see an error, it's in that, it's in that, uh, it's in that big array. You can just go ahead and change that value. 140, 140, 160. That's looking good. So that's a lot of work we did just with code. Um, so in the next video, I'm almost at 20 minutes now. I think for the next video, let's do the purchasing of it. So we land on it. We're going to have an owner. They're going to own it. If we have, we can buy it or we can have, or we might have to pay rent and then pay the owner. I thought that was cool. All right. So I'll see you in the next video. I'm sorry I didn't get further along here, but this was kind of, this was kind of intense putting all these things in here.